There are 42 different wand handles in Hogwarts Legacy, and they're split into 14 categories. So all of these names you see on screen right now, there are three different color variations within each of those categories. You see, in Hogwarts Legacy, you can customize your wand, and there are two ways of doing it. The first way is when you initially get your wand at Ollivander's, and once you set this, it cannot be changed. We'll go over that here in a second. But the wand handles you see here are an additional component to your wand in Hogwarts Legacy. In fact, the wand you receive from Ollivander's actually won't have a handle initially at all, so you'll need to collect one of the 42 available handles in the game and then equip it from the gear menu. This allows customization of your wand as a wizard or witch, but it keeps the actual core part of the wand the same and unchangeable, which certainly fits within the lore of the wizarding world. Now, the majority of these wand handles are going to be available available as random loot throughout the vast world of Hogwarts Legacy, but five of them are actually available through specific quests. And those five are the Black Variant of the Arrow, Avian Grey, Orbicular Violet, Checkerboard Brown, and Column Beige. I'll also go ahead and put the quest on screen now that you need to complete in order to obtain each of these handles. One of the great things about Hogwarts Legacy's quest system is that none of these are missable quests. You can get them at any point in the game. In fact, I got most of mine actually after beating the game's main story. Now, if you look through your list of quests and you don't have these, then you may need to pull out your map and scan through looking for quest icons. And don't worry, I actually had a little moment of panic myself thinking that they actually were missable somehow, but when I scanned through the map, I eventually found them and they do show the rewards right when you hover over the quest. So you really don't even have to pay attention to the name of the quest. You can simply look at the rewards instead. As for the other wand handles, they're all under the exploration category, which means they could be anywhere in the open world of Hogwarts Legacy, inside any loot chest. I've been looking around online. I've seen a few mentions from other sites where they list out specific locations for a specific wand handle. And hopefully this is true. Personally, I have not been able to replicate this. From what I've seen, they appear to be randomized. It'd be a lot easier if you knew exactly where to go for certain wand handles, but that certainly does not fit with the way the loot system works, at least in the rest of the game, so I am pretty sure that they are totally randomized. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments below, which I know you guys will. Now remember, you can actually change these wand handles anytime and as many times as you want. Once you have them, they're totally yours to use. Take them off, reapply, swap back and forth as much as you want. Now, as for when you initially select your wand at Ollivander's, you cannot go back and change that. So let's go over all of those options and you'll actually go to Ollivander's pretty early in the game, most likely after your first hour or so of playtime. Maybe some of you are preparing for a second playthrough already. I actually think it's good to take a look at the wand handles first because then when you're doing this section with Ollivander, you can actually find one that is going to match up even better because there are definitely certain pairings that I think just fit together better than others. But as for the wand ceremony at Ollivander's, if you've already linked your Wizarding World account to your WV account, it will pull all of your wand information there from the Wizarding World site into the game. But either way, Way you can completely change things here however you want. Now the first tab is really a summary of your selections and lists out the wood type, core type, flexibility, and wand length. What's interesting is that the wood type doesn't really affect the appearance of the wand at all, and neither does the wand core for that matter. They also don't affect anything about how the wand actually performs, so a few of these options are really here just to honor the lore of the series, although I will say Mr. Ollivander's dialogue does change slightly based on the wand core you select. And you shall find no more dependable a wand than one with a unicorn hair core. The second tab is where you'll select your wand style, and this is really what controls the main visual of the appearance of the wand that you're going to be seeing in game. There are eight total styles here, and each has three different variations. So you can go for the very simple classic look with traditional colors, or you can go for something more unique like a notched wand with a dusty pink coloration. The next tab over is where you'll set the wood type, length, and flexibility, and from what I was able to see in my testing, this is really just here for the lore. I didn't notice any changes at all in the appearance of the the wand regardless of wood type, flexibility, or even the length that was selected. Now maybe you can actually tell a slight difference in game with the wand length, but on this page right here, as you can see, I'm going back and forth, no change in the wand length. Now what's interesting about the wand cores page is that it actually does hint at there being some sort of difference in the magical properties of the wand, with Dragon Heartstring being known for producing powerful magic, the Unicorn Hair for producing consistent magic, and the Phoenix Feather for producing a great range of magic. Again though, I think those options are purely there for lore 
your reasons and to get you a slightly different dialogue option for Mr. Ollivander after you select your wand. And again, I just have to stress these properties here, none of them can be changed from this point forward. So once you hold down the purchase button here, there's no confirmation screen. That's it. This is the wand that you'll have and the one you'll use throughout the game. Now guys, if you're finding this video helpful, go ahead and click that subscribe button, bell icon on for more Hogwarts Legacy content. I really appreciate the support and it certainly helps out the channel. Overall, I really think this is a nice system Avalanche has in place here that should please the fans who all wanted wand customization. And trust me, there were a lot of people asking for this one, but it also balances it out with the lore of the series, which to anyone who's read the books, you'll know the wand chooses the wizard. We even learn in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows that wands are almost sentient and this magical bonding process Process that takes place between a wand and its owner is very important for the magic of a witch or wizard. In fact, there are times in the series where characters have to use wands other than their own, and it almost always goes poorly. Mr. Ollivander even hints at this with his dialogue in Hogwarts Legacy. Do not be surprised at your new wand's ability to perceive your intentions particularly in a moment of need. Wands that haven't chosen their witch or wizard simply don't perform as well. This is also one of the reasons Professor Weasley encourages us very early in our Hogwarts Legacy journey to go and get our own wand instead of using what I assume is the loaned wand at the start of the game. Now there's certainly so much to see, do, and explore in Hogwarts Legacy, and there are actually quite a few things the game doesn't outright tell you, so I've prepared a list of 10 tips and tricks I wish I knew sooner. These would have really saved me a lot of time, and you can check out that video on the right side of your screen now. As always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.